Hi, Steve. Hey. Um, Steve, obviously you had a, a clutch of the lads still out at the weekend. Any of them back for, for the Leeds match? Uh, one. Uh, that's uh, Fernandez. Fernandez has, has proved uh, negative, and I can say because he revealed himself that he'd been he had the virus, so uh, he's he's okay. And the one thing I'm just looking at is the three or four who who played on Saturday. It's how it's left them. I think the big thing what we're seeing is probably fatigue more than um, more than any other th- anything else. So uh, we'll see how again they are today. But with that in mind, I'm I'm probably going to change two or three. That's for sure. Um, because of just the after effects and the, the games we've got coming up. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's good news for you having Fernandez back because you were light at the back, but I'm guessing... Yeah, we were very light in that department, which is un- unfortunate. You know, it seemed to be defenders where, unfortunately, where, where big problems are. But, um, yeah, coming fairly getting back. And, but I have to say, I thought the, the performance of Isaac was, was terrific. So um, that's always given me food for thought going. So when there's always that little bit of a silver lining on something that we know that Isaac Hayden can, can play there and play there at a, at a very, very good level. How has he been since the weekend? Because he spoke very honestly about how it's been for him the last couple of weeks. How has he been since? I think the big thing was just was, was fatigue, tiredness, the way it left him. Um, and that goes for two or three of them as well, you know. So um, as we'll say, we'll see how he is. You know, arguably he's worth were fittest player in the club. So it just shows you it has no boundaries, this thing. Mm-hmm. And that um, unfortunately, you put him to bed for something like 10 days. So all fair credit to him to, to get out of his bed and go and play, which was uh, which was good to see. So you've still got, um, by my reckoning, he's still got uh, Lascelle, Shar, Manquillo, St. Maxim and, and, and Fraser still out. Any of those lads long term or do you expect them back fairly soon? Right, Fraser's OK. Um, He's been just. We've just been. He's been with injury, um, but he's okay now. He's trained now for the past um, week and a bit. He's obviously been in, interrupted because of you know the, the time we had away from the training ground. But um, he's full. He's fully fit and, and ready to go, which is like a new signing for us because we've had to wait patiently. So um, he will be involved. And your, your front player's doing well right now. You seem to have a number of, of options all of a sudden up there and Fraser added to that. Well, you know, that's what we've tried to put in place over the last, certainly in the 18 months that I've arrived at the club, we've tried to strengthen that area. I do think it's, I've said it many, many times, it's the most important area of the pitch to, to, to score a goal, create a goal is the most difficult part. And to have... Yeah, the difference in personnel certainly makes a difference. And um, when you look at what we've got now, we're far, far healthier than we were 18 months ago, in my opinion. Um, I guess the players, or all of you, have been, have been tested since the weekend. Has there been any new positive cases? Yep. Or- we're all, thankfully, we're all negative. So that's three uh, negative tests we've all had in the past six days. So it does look as if we've overcome it. As I said, as I, said I think that... The crucial thing was the response of shutting down the training ground. Yeah. Um, um, with the doctor and Brian from the Premier League, who's monitored us every day here, has, um, has contributed to that. That common sense and shutting us down has certainly, um, has certainly paid, the, paid dividends. Can I just ask you, are you doing anything differently around the place since it's been real? Well, we, we, no, I mean, look, we've been going since last March with it, you know. It's, um, you know, so... It, we've, we've adhered to all the protocols. We've we've made it a bit more radical that all around the building now everybody wears masks, you know. So we're we're doing it as 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 best we can with it, like we've like we've done since last March. I think we were just unfortunate that week of, of travelling together, going to Crystal Palace together. Whatever happened um, was was very very difficult. But the amount of um, the amount of people who went down in a quick period of time was was quite remarkable and j- just finally for me Steve obviously things are on the high just now you've had two good wins punctuated by the the outbreak but is there maybe just a, a slight concern and, and I know you won't want to get too ahead of yourself but is there a slight concern that there might be a knock-on effect from this maybe a couple of weeks down the line I mean you've got what seven games in 21 days on the back of, of this outbreak you know it, well we're going to have to monitor that and, 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 and approach it in a and respect it, of course, it's there. We can't do anything about it. The response for the players 
to get the win at the weekend, I thought was absolutely terrific. You know, under difficult circumstances, hadn't trained, hadn't seen them for 10 days. First time we trained together was on the Wednesday, really. People yeah. to get out of the bed to come and play, you know, the, the attitude of them to, to get a result was, was there for everybody to see. So I couldn't be more pleased. And yes, down the line, we'll have to monitor the whole situation, which I will. Difficult to manage, of course, because the one thing you want is a full, fit, healthy squad. And at the moment, we haven't got that. You know, we've got people coming back, but, you know, are still fatigued with it. It's the one thing um, above all is, uh, is the fatigue thing is, 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 the most, is the most worrying. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Andy Sixsmith, PLP. Hiya, Steve. Yeah, just following on from Saturday's result, just given everything that's happened over the last couple of weeks or so, what did the result and the performance tell you about this group of players that you were able to, to put out on the pitch? Well, for a start, I think there were six or seven of them who've been here a long time and who got Newcastle out of the Championship. That core of players has been here and are part of the fabric of the club, if that makes sense a little bit. You know, they've been here a long time. They know, what, they know what's coming. Yeah, Isaac, yeah, John Joe, yeah, yeah Matty Ritchie, yeah, Carl Darlow. You know, they, they have been here at the club a long, long time. And it's no surprise to me with their resilience and their attitude towards it. You know, yes, they might, they might not make a pass well enough at times, but the one thing you can't question with that group is the determination to do well. And that's why they've been at Newcastle for three, four years. You know, they are a real good, genuine group. And if ever they needed to stick together over the weekend, they've showed that again. Where I thought in the first half we had one, two really great opportunities to go 2-0. Had a difficult spell of 20, 25 minutes after half time. Fair play to West Brom. They, they changed us and caught us, caught us cold. We made a mistake. But... Again, the, the, the last 20 minutes, if there was one team going to win it, I thought it was going to be us. So, fair play to them. They're, they've shown again that resilience, which can certainly get you through. I know we talk about certain players coming back from injury. How much of a selection headache does a fully fit Dwight Gale give you, considering the quality of his finish on Saturday? <laughs> well, I've been saying that he's been hampered, unfortunately, for probably 12 months out of the 18 months I've been here. He got himself in really good shape mm. the back end of last season after lockdown and proved what a good striker he is. Um, Dwight's a really good player. So, look, the one, end, one, the one thing we've tried to do at the top end of the pitch was to improve. When you look of Andy Carroll, Dwight, Joe Linton, you know, of, of course, Callum Wilson, and then you've got Alan, and we've got, you know, Ryan Fraser. All of a sudden, we've got a few options in that, in that area. Um, so, in my opinion, over the last 18 months, that's where we've improved most. You mentioned Joe Linton. We spoke to him yesterday. He talked glowingly, I think, of how you've stuck by him, how you've protected him. How pleased are you professionally, but personally as well, by his upturn in form? Well, do you know something? It's been, there's no dispute that it's been difficult for the lad. But the one thing that stuck out more than anything, he personally never shirked, never made an excuse, trained. Trained hard in those moments when he was probably on the ropes, but still had that desire to do well and when you've got that attitude or his attitude you know he he trains every day he's a really good pro and and you want him to succeed certainly what we've learned and what we've seen is that he enjoys playing with somebody else I don't think he enjoys playing the focal point but to play to a side or to play off the front has certainly and play with somebody has certainly helped him and helped the team I'm sure just uh, talking about this week and, and Leeds and then obviously Fulham at the weekend. How far can a week like this where you're playing all three promoted sides, which is a quirk of the fixture calendar, go towards shaping this season and what you hope to achieve? Well, I think we've all been impressed with, with Leeds and all of a sudden now Fulham look like a different outfit to what they were yeah. eight, ten weeks ago. You know, so they're, 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 you know, they're, they're making a fist of it and I'm convinced Leeds will with the, the, the top class coach and manager they've gotten in place they're very very difficult games like they all are in the Premier League but the one thing we have done at the minute we've given ourselves a really good platform going into Christmas which is always a difficult period and of course um, January we've got some big games coming up big week let's hope we can we started off quite well let's hope we can do the same again 
just a final one from me, just on the sad news yesterday of Gerard Houllier passing away. Just uh, your thoughts and, and reflections on a, a great manager, but a great man as well. Well, I think that's um, I think that's the most important thing. You know, we, yes, football managers are, are talking about their ability, but certainly Gerard had that little bit of class, mm. and that he was a wonderful man. Which, um, which, when you see the, all the tributes towards him, they all allude to the same thing. What a Yes, a very good football manager. There's no dispute in that, but also a very, very good man, and, and always were thought so with his family in these difficult, difficult times. Thanks, Steve. Best of luck against Leeds. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Don Thewlis. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? I'm okay, Don. How are you? Yes, not bad. Thanks, not bad. Good, good. Um, Leeds have won a, a lot of admirers this season for the for the way they've been playing, um, and certainly when they started off were kind of outscoring the opposition not so much recently they have conceded quite a lot of goals what do you have to do though to, to overcome that attack well, physically, I think physically as a team they are the number one in the Premier League so the physical output they, they have got the ability to run and run big distances very quickly um, and that's one thing he's brought into them um, of you know he's a top top class coach and manager the, the, the boy the fellow Bielsa so you know, it's no surprise to me because they did that in the, in the championship, you know, the, the blue teams away. So we have to be ready for that challenge. That's for sure. Um, but uh, the Premier League, what it is, is he's finding out that, the, you know, that teams won't be blown away. So the one thing we're going to have to do to start with is be ready for that challenge physically. Um, and hopefully, you know, they leave themselves the way they play. They leave themselves a bit open. Hopefully, we can have the bit of quality at the top end of the pitch to catch them. Um, certain Premier League teams have already achieved that. Difficult, don't get me wrong, but that's what we've got to try and that's what we've got to try and do. Um, and I don't think Newcastle have played Leeds at Elm Road for for 17 years in wow. the top flight. In the top flight, anyway, is it quite nice to have because the, the games between Newcastle and Leeds always used to have a bit of edge. Is it nice to have them back from that point of view? Absolutely. I mean, you know, a big club like Leeds deserve to be there, you know, because of the unwavering support. What makes a big club is a big support. And what's made the spectacle over the years is Newcastle against Leeds. Two big clubs, big, huge support, big rivalry, bit of a derby thing going on, even though it's two hours away. But, you know, a a really good spectacle. So in that respect, it's good to see them back into the league. And, um, and it's only a shame that there's not supporters there to witness it. But let's hope, let's hope in the next few weeks in particular that we, we can't see that because even with 2,000 people in the ground, you can, you, can, you can see a bit of a difference. I didn't think that would be possible, I have to tell you, but after witnessing it for the last couple of weeks, certainly it, it gives people an advantage. It's amazing, actually, how, how much noise 2,000 people can make, even in a massive stadium, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, and as I said, uh, you know, I, I didn't think it would be possible to create, but certainly they have. When you witness it and you hear it and you see it, and you, you see Klopp going to the to the cop end the other week there to, to applaud the supporters and the difference they made, you know, so it has made a difference. And even then, statistics are telling you that it brings back that little bit of home advantage as well. So let's hope there's a, there's a big call tomorrow from the government and we go into tier two and we can get some supporters back in for Fulham. Yeah, I, somehow I doubt that, sadly. Um, just finally, from me, you mentioned it before, the sort of togetherness of the of the core of the squad. But do you think there's an element that, because so many players have, have had COVID and everything um, and, and come through it, that will kind of make them even stronger together? Well, I think certainly it's what it has done is, is appreciate, I mean, just what this virus is. The quickness of it, the way it rattled through us was, was staggering, really. I mean, it was, a, it was days. Um, and, the, and the decision to, to shut us down was um, the most sensible thing because since then, being away from each other for 10 days is um, certainly now we've had three tests and everybody's negative. So that response. So, look, they've been together a long time, the, the squad of players. It, it means something to them. You can see that, yes, they, they might miss a pass and yes, they might miss a chance, but... You can't deny that group of players who've been here since the championship have got a certain resilience that, you know, you have to have to play for Newcastle. And certainly they've got that in abundance. And that 
core group as what we relied on on Saturday and what the club has relied on really for the last three, four years. And did you ever actually get to the, the bottom of where the outbreak came no. from? No. No, unfortunately, we weren't, we, 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 we weren't able to do that. As I said, thankfully, the, the decision by the doctor and the medical people to, to shut down the training ground as quick as we did, because that lead up to Crystal Palace um, was quite staggering and, and the outcome of it, you know, to have so many in such a short period of time, the swiftness of shutting the training ground was, was key. Thanks, Don. Chris Conway. Hi, Steve. Chris. Um, do you think you're sort of starting to see the, I don't want to say the shoots of recovery, but the, you know, the, the worst of the COVID outbreak has been and gone now? Well, we hope so. We've had now uh, three tests, um, which have all, all of us have, have come back negative, apart from obviously the people who are still isolating. Um, but we have got one player back, Feddy, um, who's recovered from it. So there's one, but the, the core who's been here um, is now tested negative for the last three for the last week. So we certainly hope so. And of the players who who aren't back yet, um, obviously I don't. I know you don't want to to name names as as such, but is there still a, a big chunk missing? Yeah, yeah. Um, after off the squad on Saturday, we'll have Ryan Fraser who. Is recovered from injury, so he's okay. And Feddy's went public on his, so I can speak on part of Feddy. Feddy's come back in. Fernandez has come back into the into the squad. He's now had two negative tests, and he's okay. So he will be involved. He'll be involved tomorrow night. Does it feel a, a bit of a, a, a relief that touch wood, you know, that the worst of it is is over? Well, we certainly hope so. The problem is, though, we've got you know two two players in particular not well at all. And two members of the staff who are, who are still poorly. So, yes, you know, we're relieved that nobody else has got it, but we're also concerned um, of, of certainly the couple of members of staff and, and two players in particular who, um, unfortunately, it's, it's having, a, it's having a, a bad effect on. I would imagine, um, you know, because you are such a, a tight knit group, uh, a lot of your thoughts will be for, for those guys. Well, you know, and if you ever underestimated this thing, then don't, because um, you know this is you know they're talking about elite professionals here, and the way the way it got a hold of everybody was 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 quite scary stuff. So um, for everybody out there, for goodness' sake, stay safe. And I know it's Christmas, but of what we've just witnessed, then you've got to be careful. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. And just one final follow up from Keith Downey. Yeah, Steve, sorry, just one. Um, I didn't want to talk about this in the middle of all the, the COVID stuff, but it looks as though the concussion subs will get rubber stamped by IFAB tomorrow. Um, you'll be, will you be pleased to, to, to hear that? Oh, well, look, yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, the one thing that we've all done, and I should know, you know, is play on when, when, when you're at risk, especially with concussion, because you can feel okay for a couple of minutes and think that you've recovered and you haven't. So, and then it becomes dangerous. So anything that they can do there, you know, I just hope that 10 minutes is enough. You know, maybe I think there's a vote on five subs as well, which I think a lot of us might have changed our opinions on that as well. But um, yeah, it could only be a good thing.